You know, I used to always say the idea of government creating jobs was ridiculous. Government doesn't create jobs. It can certainly alter the playing field to make it easier or harder for business to create jobs. But now that government is taking so much of your money and just creating jobs out of thin air, I guess they can create jobs. But we're talking on the Armstrong and Getty Show this morning. Tim Sandifer from the uh, Pacific Legal Foundation. His book is The Right to Earn a Living, Economic Freedom and the Law. Tim, thanks for hanging around. Thanks for having me on. Did you see the Rasmussen poll came out a couple of weeks ago um, that 75% of likely voters prefer free markets over a government-managed economy? Just 14% think a managed economy is better. 11% is not sure. But among America's political class, people who work in the government, um, they prefer government-managed economies by 44 to 37%. Well, it's because they believe in the the powers of government that they get that they go into the, the into that job that they become bureaucrats. I mean, those those people who know how to actually create wealth and actually run businesses go into business, and so and and because they're so busy running their businesses, they don't have time to sit around and, and mess with other people's lives. Right, uh, and and I don't want to demonize anybody who works for the government on any level. I mean, some of us just prefer to. To be employees, do well, rise up, etc. We don't have any desire to start our own business, and that's just fine. Uh, but the the fact that government has so much faith in government is really disturbing to me, especially yeah. in America. And and I think a lot of them, of course, don't understand the basics of economics. I mean, you said you just earlier, you said government can't create jobs. That's correct. Government can create jobs. Government can temporarily cause jobs, but it does so only by taking money away from the businesses that would create jobs. Well, so right. Free- it, it transfers jobs, really. Yeah, and it from can private only do to public so temporarily sector. because the jobs that government creates are not profitable jobs. So the, uh, you can do a, a simple thought experiment. Suppose the government plans to build a bridge from point A to point B. Think for a second, why isn't there already a bridge between those two points? <laughs> well, because if there was a market demand for a bridge, a business would have come along and built a bridge and charged people a toll to go across the bridge. Mm-hmm. The fact that there's no bridge there suggests that there's no profit to be made in building a bridge there. The fact that the government has to go in and step in here and do this, and that and that applies equally to bailing out General Motors or any other thing that government does, the fact that government is redistributing wealth in this way is caused by the fact that there's no market demand for it, which means it's unprofitable. If government's going into this business, it's almost certainly because it's a waste of money. Now, this is fascinating to me from the same Rasmussen poll. Um, the, the preference for capitalism over a state-controlled economy, was it 60%? Um, it was uh, several years ago. Last year, it was 53% Americans saying they prefer capitalism over socialism. That's an unbelievable number. Horrifying. Even 60% is horrifying to me. It even made it into Michael Moore's film that, you know, more and more people like socialism. But, Tim, this is the part that I'm, I'm working up toward, and it is stunning to me. Only 35% of the people of the thousands polled believe a free market economy is the same thing as capitalism. They have been the, – the term capitalism has uh, been demonized. I mean, it's like, uh, well, like Rush Limbaugh has tried to do the liberal or, or uh, you know, any other term. Only, barely a third understood that a free market economy is capitalism. Yeah, and, and actually it's kind of ironic because the word capitalism was actually invented by Karl Marx – as a as a token of disapproval, right, and and it was then it was adopted by some libertarian thinkers, for instance, Ayn Rand, who who tried to use that term and 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 capture it in in favor of free markets and right. things. I actually prefer the term free markets because there really is no such thing as capitalism. The way that there is a such a thing as communism, like communism is is a is an idea that's imposed by a group of people through the government. But capitalism isn't that way. Capitalism is just freedom. It's the capitalism absence of that the natural, control. Right. is the natural freedom that we're all born with. Right. So we've got to start using the term free markets there. Because um, the number, the percentage of people who like free markets, again, is, is vastly higher. Vastly right. higher. What was that number? Uh, more than centrally planned economies, which Americans, yeah, it's 75 to 14. Yeah. And, and yeah, and... Well, and, and I think p- people need to have it emphasized that capitalism or free markets, what we're talking about is freedom of choice, freedom of economic choice. 
When the government comes in and regulates a business or regulates health care or whatever, what it's doing is taking away from you your freedom of choice. And people think of this as, oh, well, you know, I, I can't afford to pay my bills, so the government's going to be compassionate and nice to me and pay my bills for me. No, what it's doing is it's taking away from you the freedom of choice that you have. Now, now that choice, of course, Im- implies responsibility, and that means if you buy something you can't afford and you can't pay for it, then you lose it. Right. But on the upside, if you buy something and you make a, a, a good deal out of it, then you enjoy the profits. And that way we all act more responsibly and we ultimately end up benefiting society that way. You know, my, my campaign lately, Tim, and this is Tim Sandifer from the Pacific Legal Foundation, um, is is that if you, the more you accept from somebody, the more you are dependent upon them, and the more you are dependent upon them, the more you are, uh, they, they're, you're enslaved by them. You are controlled by them. Uh, that used to be like deep in the marrow of Americans. They knew that, but it seems to me we've lost it. Is the yeah, slide think, to socialism inevitable in a free society? Uh, well, no. The, the slide to socialism can be, uh, I mean, it, it, nothing is inevitable in a free society. People are free to make choices, and they are free to choose whether to uh, accept a government that tries to take everything from them and redistribute it, or they're free to choose to, to enjoy their liberty and their freedom of choice on, as an alternative. So, no, it's not inevitable. But I think what happens is forces are set in motion by, by groups who insist that it's more compassionate to pay people not to work, that, it, that, that government bureaucrats know what we want better than, what, than we do, and so they start taking money that we would have invested in stuff that we want and instead invest it in so-called jobs bills. And, and, and so-called infrastructure investment and right. so forth, when what we would have done with that money, we would have invested it in a business that we actually want to see in our neighborhood. And, and anyway, these bureaucrats think that they know better than we do how, what kind of economy we want. And gradually you start feeding that alligator, and it just gets bigger and bigger. And what do you guys say um, to people who say, well, great, economic freedom gave us the, the Wall Street meltdown? Oh, that's that absurd. Cat. That is so absurd. I mean, the only industry in the world that's more heavily regulated than Wall Street is probably the oil industry, and look at what happened in the the Gulf. And then, of course, that gets blamed on capitalism, too. Now, capitalism is a wonderful boogeyman for the left to trot out and blame for everything uh, because it gives them another excuse to impose further and further controls. But when you actually look at what happens in, it, it, historically, it turns out that it's government making these bad decisions and, and subsidizing bad decisions and uh, bailing out people who make bad decisions and then insulating people from, from the costs uh, that they impose on other people. Those are the things that cause these kinds of meltdowns. Right. Wall Street, of course, was caused by uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and everybody knows it, but gets sold to people as, oh, well, this is more reason why bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. should be making decisions about how you invest your money and what kind of profits you're allowed to enjoy. Yeah. And the, the, the really tragic thing is, it's funny, I was thinking about this during the break, when, uh, it seems to me when you, when you tax and overregulate business, business owners take two beers and jump. <laughs> and we will reset that in a moment. Tim, hang on. Don't go away. As I always say, try it with your kid. Try it with your dog for 48 hours, just for two days. I want you to try this. It's not much of a commitment, is it? Will you do this for me? Two days with your kids and your dogs. Reward bad behavior and punish good behavior. Just for two days and see what kind of kid and dog you have. Now imagine doing that for years and years. What are you going to get? What do you think, huh? More to come with Tim Sandifer from the Pacific Legal Foundation. This is the Armstrong and Getty Show. You got to get two beers and jump. When your truck ain't got no gas, you got to get two beers and jump. You got to get two beers and jump. You got to get two beers and jump. You gotta get to jump. You gotta get to jump. So when you learn your wife's been cheating, you gotta get two beers and jump. When your phone ain't getting no reception, you gotta get two beers and jump. When you've had enough of your congressman, you gotta get two beers and jump. When you burn your eggs in a frying pan, you gotta get two beers. 